Good morning. It's so nice out. I can't resist reading outside. So, June 3rd, 2024. Two kingdoms in contrast, and we have a commentary. Now that almost a quarter of a century has passed since the once powerful nation of Israel divided into two kingdoms, the character of each becomes fairly set for the remaining three quarters of a century. Judah, blessed with two good leaders in Asa and his son Jehoshaphat, will remain largely faithful to God. Both men will bring about reforms in Judah and reinstate appreciation for the law. In Israel, by contrast, none of the next seven kings will bring moral enlightenment to an idolatrous nation, and civil war will continue to divide God's people. It is a sober reminder that God's people will, through the ages, face division and strife when they forsake their God. In Judah, still reading in 1 Kings chapter 15, Asa, his son, succeeded him as king, and in his days the country was at peace for ten years. Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He removed the foreign altars and the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, and to obey his laws and commands. He removed the high places and incense altars in every town in Judah, and the kingdom was at peace under him. He built up the fortified cities of Judah, since the land was at peace. No one was at war with him during those years, for the Lord gave him rest. Let us build up these towns, he said to Judah, and put walls around them with towers, gates, and bars. The land is still ours, because we have sought the Lord our God. We sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. Asa had an army of 300,000 men from Judah, equipped with large shields and with spears, and 280,000 from Benjamin, armed with small shields and with bows. All these were brave fighting men in Israel. The other events of Jeroboam's reign, his wars, and how he ruled, are written in the books of the annals of the kings of Israel. He reigned for 22 years and then rested with his fathers. And Nadab, his son, succeeded him as king. Nadab, son of Jeroboam, became king of Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, walking in the ways of his father and in his sin, which he had caused Israel to commit. As for the other events of Nadab's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Ba Baasha, son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, plotted against him, and he struck him down at Gibbethon, a Philistine town while Nadab and all Israel were besieging it. Baasha killed Nadab in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and succeeded him as king. As soon as he began to reign, he killed Jeroboam's whole family. He did not leave Jeroboam anyone that breathed, but destroyed them all, according to the word of the Lord given through his servant Ahijah the Shilonite. Because of the sins Jeroboam had committed and had caused Israel to commit, and because he provoked the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Baasha, son of Ahijah, became king of all Israel in Terzah, and he reigned twenty four years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, walking in the ways of Jeroboam and in his sin which he had caused Israel to commit. In Judah, Zerah the Cushite marched out against them with a vast army and three hundred chariots and came as far as Marisha. Asa went out to meet him, and they took up battle positions in the valley of Zephetha Zephath, near Marisha. Then Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rely on you. 
and in your name we have come against this vast army. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. The Lord struck down the Cushites before Asa and Judah. The Cushites fled, and Asa and his army pursued them as far as Gerar. Such a great number of Cushites fell that they could not recover. They were crushed before the Lord and his forces. The men of Judah carried off a large amount of plunder. They destroyed all the villages around Gerar, for the terror of the Lord had fallen upon them. They plundered all these villages, since there was much booty there. They also attacked the camps of the herdsmen and carried off droves of sheep and goats and camels. Then they returned to Jerusalem. The Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach and without the law. But in their distress they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, and he was found by them. In those days it was not safe to travel about, for all the inhabitants of the lands were in great turmoil. One nation was being crushed by another, and one city by another, because God was troubling them with every kind of distress. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Azariah, son of Oded, the prophet, he took courage. He removed the detestable idols from the whole land of Judah and Benjamin from the towns he had captured in the hills of Ephraim. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was in front of the portico of the Lord's temple. Although he did not remove the high places from Israel, Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. He brought into the temple of God the silver and gold, and the articles that he and his father had dedicated. There was no more war until the thirty-fifth year of Asa's reign. Then he assembled all Judah and Benjamin and the people from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, who had settled among them, for large numbers had come over to him from Israel when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. They assembled at Jerusalem in the third month of the fifteenth year of Asa's reign. At that time they sacrificed to the Lord seven hundred head of cattle and seven thousand sheep and goats from the plunder they had brought back. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and soul. All who would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, were to be put to death, whether small or great man or woman. They took an oath to the Lord with loud acclamation, with shouting and with trumpets and horns. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they had sworn it wholeheartedly. They sought God eagerly, and he was found by them, so the Lord gave them rest on every side. King Asa also deposed his grandmother, Mekah, from her position as queen mother, because she had made a repulsive Asherah pole. Asa cut the pole down, broke it up, and burned it in the Kidron Valley. There was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, throughout their reigns. Baasha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa, king of Judah. Asa then took all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and of his own palace. He entrusted it to his officials and sent them to Ben-Hadad, son of Tebrimon, the son of Hazayan, the king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said, as there was between my father and your father. See, I am sending you a gift of silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. Then Hadad agreed with King Asa and sent the commanders of his forces against the towns of Israel. He conquered Ijon, Dan, Abel, Beth, Mekah, and all Kinnereth in addition to Naphtali. 
When Besha heard this, he stopped building Rama and withdrew to Terza. Then King Asa issued an order to all Judah, Judah. No one was exempt, and they carried away from Rama the stones and timber Basha had been using there. With them, King Asa built up Geba in Benjamin, and also Mitzpah. At that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Aram, and not on the Lord your God, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were not the Cushites and Libyans a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those who, whose hearts are fully committed to him. You have done a foolish thing, and from now on you will be at war. Asa was angry with the seer because of this. He was so enraged that he put him in prison. At the same time, Asa brutally oppressed some of the people in Israel. Moreover, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani, to Basha and his house because of all the evil he had done in the eyes of the Lord, provoking him to anger by the things he did, and becoming like the house of Jeroboam, and also because he destroyed it. Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, son of Hanani, against Basha. I lifted you up from the dust you made, you leader of my people Israel. But you walked in the ways of Jeroboam and caused my people Israel to sin and to provoke me to anger by their sins. So I am about to consume Basha and his house, and I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nabat. Dogs will eat those belonging to Basha who die in the city, and the birds of the air will feed on those who die in the country. As for the other events of Basha's reign, what he did and his achievements, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Basha rested with his fathers and was buried in T Terza. And Elah, his son, succeeded him as king. In the twenty-sixth year of Asa, king of Judah, Elah, son of Basha, became king of Israel, and he reigned in Terza two years. As for the other events of Elah's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Zimri, one of his officials, who had command of half his chariots, plotted against him. Elah was in Terza at the time, getting drunk in the home of Arza, the man in charge of the palace at Terza. Zimri came in, struck him down, and killed him in the twenty-seventh year of Asa, king of Judah. Then he succeeded him as king. In the twenty-seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, Zimri reigned in Terza seven days. As soon as he began to reign and was seated on the throne, he killed off Basha's whole family. He did not spare a single male, whether relative or friend. So Zimri destroyed the whole family of Basha in accordance with the word of the Lord spoken against Basha through the prophet Jehu. Because of all the sins Basha and his son Elah had committed and had caused Israel to commit, so that they provoked the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger by their worthless idols. As for the other events of Zimri's reign and the rebellion he carried out, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? The army was encamped near Gibbethon, a Philistine town. When the Israelites in the camp heard that Zimri had plotted against the king and murdered him, they proclaimed Omri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that very day in the camp. Then Omri and all the Israelites with him withdrew from Gibbethon and laid siege to Terza. When Zimri saw that the city was taken, he went into the citadel of the royal palace and set the palace on fire around him. So he died because of the sins he had committed, doing evil in the eyes of the Lord, and walking in the ways of Jeroboam, and in the sin he had committed and had caused Israel to commit. Then the people of Israel were split into two factions, half supported Tibni, son of Ginnath for king, 
and the other half supported Omri. He not only considered it trivial to commit the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, but he also married his son Ahab to, question mark, it's like in parentheses, but he also married Jezebel, daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians. Hmm. But Omri's followers proved stronger than those of Tibni, son of Ginnath. So Tibni died, and Omri became king. In the thirty-first year of Asa, king of Judah, Omri became king of Israel, and he reigned twelve years, six of them in Terza. He built the hill of Samaria from Shemer for two talents of silver, and built a city on the hill, calling it Samaria, after Shemer, the name of the former, former owner of the hill. But Omri did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and sinned more than all those before him. He walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and his, and his sin, which he had caused Israel to commit, so that they provoked the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger by their worthless idols. As for the other events of Omri's reign, what he did and the things he achieved, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Omri rested with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. And Ahab, his son, succeeded him as king. In the thirty-eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, son of Omri, became king of Israel, and he reigned in Samaria over Israel twenty-two years. There was never a man like Ahab, who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel, his wife. He behaved in the vilest manner by going after idols, like the Amorites the Lord drove out before Israel. Ahab began to serve Baal and worship him. He set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal that he built in Samaria. Ahab also made an Asherah pole and did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than did all the kings of Israel before him. In Ahab's time, Hael of Bethel rebuilt Jericho. He laid its foundations at the cost of his firstborn son, Abiram, Abiram, and he set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segub, in accordance with the word of the Lord spoken by Joshua, son of Nun. In Judah, in the thirty-ninth year of his reign, Asa was afflicted with a disease in his feet. Though the disease was severe, even in his illness, he did not seek help from the Lord, but only from the physicians. In the, the events of Asa's reign, from beginning to end, are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Then in the forty-first year of his reign, Asa died and rested with his fathers. They buried him in the tomb that he had cut out for himself in the city of David. They laid him on a bier covered with spices and various blended perfumes, and they made a huge fire in his honor. And Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, became king of Judah in the fourth year of Ahab, king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother's name was Azuba, daughter of Shilohi. He walked in the ways of his father Asa and did not stray from them. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He rid the land of the rest of the male shrine prostitutes who remained there even after the reign of his father Asa. There was then no king in Edom. A deputy ruled. The high places, however, were not removed and the people still had not set their hearts on the God of their fathers. He stationed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah, and put garrisons in Judah, and in the towns of Ephraim that his father Asa had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat, because in his early years he walked in the ways of his father, the ways his father David had followed. He did not consult the Baals, but sought the God of his father, 
and followed his commands rather than the practices of Israel. The Lord established the kingdom under his control, and all Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat, so that he had great wealth and honor. His heart was devoted to the ways of the Lord. Furthermore, he removed the high places and the Asherah poles from Judah. In the third year of his reign, he sent his officials, Ben-Hael, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nethanel, and Micaiah, to teach in the towns of Judah. With them were certain Levites, Shemaiah, Nethaniah, Zebediah, Asahel, Shemariamoth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, and Tob, Tob Adonijah, and the priests Elishema and Jehoram. They taught throughout Judah, taking with them the book of the law of the Lord. They went around to all the towns of Judah and taught the people. The fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the land surrounding Judah, so that they did not make war with Jehoshaphat. Some Philistines brought Jehoshaphat gifts and silver as tribute, and the Arabs brought him flocks, 7,700 rams and 7,700 goats. Jehoshaphat became more and more powerful. He built forts and store cities in Judah and had large supplies in the towns of Judah. Now Jehoshaphat had great wealth and honor. He also kept experienced fighting men in Jerusalem. Their enrollment by families was as follows. From Judah, commanders of units of 1,000, Adna the commander with 300,000 fighting men. Next, Jehonan, Jehonanan, the commander with 280,000. Next, Amasiah, son of Zikri, who volunteered himself for the service of the Lord with 200,000. From Benjamin, Eliada, a valiant soldier with 200,000 men, armed with bows and shields. Next, Jehozabad, with 180,000 men, armed for battle. These were the men who served the king, besides those who stationed in fortified cities throughout Judah. Jehoshaphat was also at peace with the king of Israel. That's it. Where's my hair when I take my glasses off? That's it for today. See you tomorrow. Have a great day.